Hello everyone, and welcome to the Pana Sankofa Legacy channel. We are a family of five living in the U.S. We recently embarked on our new YouTube journey to share snips of our lives with the world. So please join us on this journey to learn more about us. In today's video, we are sharing a huge landscaping project that we embarked on recently that ended up being more so therapeutic for us. It was really much needed. This yard, uh, we moved into this house in June of 2021 and haven't really done anything new. So when we moved in here, as you saw in the previous clip, the, the, there were pockets of grass that was missing. There were some bald spots. Some of the bald spots were caused by just piling up leaves over there, but there were other parts that were spotty when we moved in. So we'd been wanting to do this project for a while, but never really were able to make the time for it in between our work and taking care of our kids and other priorities. Plus, it is a financial commitment to do something this big. So we've been putting it off for a while, but at this point, we just said we're going into year three of home ownership and we should show the home the love that it deserves. So this is it. Okay, so this project took us a little bit over a week to complete, so just stay tuned to see what we worked on. And while I have your attention, just wanted to share a little bit about us as well. We will sit down and do a formal family introduction video, but just a little bit of background. We are a multi, well, a bi-country uh, couple. David is originally from Liberia, and my family is from Ghana. So we, we met in college, and the rest is history. We've been together for over 11 years. What are you drinking for? What are you drinking for? So we've been through quite a lot and this journey of home ownership was one of them and we're very proud to have been able to accomplish this and to be able to share parts of our journey with you. Of course David had to dance. <laughs> he is, he loves dancing. Apparently he was nicknamed Basheke when he was younger. And Basheke is a Malian slang for shaking your back, so use your imagination there. <laughs> but you know, you gotta combine fun with work like this because it can be tedious, so I commend him, he did most of the work. I even, I even forgot that I need my blog. <laughs> So we wanted to do this project on a budget. Basically, we didn't hire any professional for, th for this. Luckily, David had a short stint with landscaping when he was in high school, so he knows how to navigate a yard. Uh, some of it, I'm sure he had to pull from memory, but he, he knew what he was doing. So what we started with, or what he started with, was removing all the grass, because we wanted to start from scratch. If we were going to do this, we want to do it right the first time and not have to do it again. So the entire, there are, there are actually two sides of the yard. The other side we didn't really show in the clip. That that grass is pretty full, so we left that alone. But the biggest yard, or the biggest part of our yard, is what he, he's working on here. So he removed over, I don't know, two days or so, removed the entire grass that was it was uh, initially installed in the yard so that was a pretty heavy lift and I came in and helped this as I could because you probably saw me in the clip I came in the frame with our our son Damon he is a year and four months old so he does take a good chunk of our time and does need our attention quite a lot so Damon and I came out 
quite a lot to entertain David, just to keep him company, not entertain him, but just to keep him company so he wasn't out there by himself all day. But the interesting thing is we had several neighbors stop by to chat with David and ask him what he was doing. People were so intrigued by it by this project because they've seen our yard the way it was for so long um, and I'm sure they were curious and they, some of them were giving feedback and just couldn't wait to see what the finished product was going to be so that was pretty interesting and this project did give us an opportunity to engage with neighbors that we see walking up and down the street but never really have an opportunity to speak with because we usually naturally right in America. I feel like most folks spend their time in their backyards or spend their time in their homes. So sometimes you don't even know your neighbor's names. Luckily for us, our neighbors across and next door, we have a pretty good hello, hi relationship with. So, but people who live like further up the street, who's probably seen our kids or probably seen us in passing, don't even know what our voices sound like, don't even know what our names are, don't even know our story necessarily. So this was pretty good for us to get to know people as well. Speaking of neighbors, funny story. When I had Damon, um, I had him by C-section and I obviously had to take my maternity leave. So my mom was my caregiver because David was still working. Um, he was on, out on the road. So uh, she took the full two months off as well to stay with me. I couldn't drive for some time. So one day David came home and, or David was coming home and obviously I couldn't drive to go pick him up. So my mom went to pick him up and we have a pretty steep driveway. And my mom, she she's an interest, per, interesting person when she panics, like her fright, fight or flight response is pretty, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but what she did was she accidentally rolled her car when she, when she reversed the car to get out of the driveway she drove her car into the neighbor's brushes so they heard this loud bang but she panics and instead of like waiting she's like let me go get my son-in-law and then when we come back we'll talk to the neighbors and let them know that i accidentally drove my car <laughs> into their brushes so they heard the noise they came outside they thought somebody stole a vehicle or something like that so they came to check on us and at this point I don't know what's going on so I'm inside with the kids but I hear people at the door so I go out and they're like did you hear a noise something happened is everyone okay I'm like yeah everyone's fine I'm just here with the kids but my husband um, is on his way home and my mom actually went to get him so they were like oh okay it's strange we heard something and we see like something might have happened and they had their flashlights out and looking anyway long story short my mom comes back and she and david come and find them still outside trying to sort out what might have happened because we live in a generally quiet neighborhood like nothing there's no action here so basically she did a hit and run on the brushes <laughs> but she didn't know what to do she was panicked so anyway turns out she had busted her is that the windshield the, 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 the mirror in the back she had busted it and didn't even know so she drove she got on the highway and started to feel this rush of wind coming into the car. Then she discovered that she had broken the window. So they come back and turns out the neighbors were planning to call the police because they thought her car had been stolen. Because we, we heard in other parts of the city that people's cars are being stolen and stuff and broken into. So anyway, they hashed it out. My mom was just like, I just wanted to go get my son-in-law before I address this because I need to get back home to my daughter and oh my god yeah thank, thank goodness for good and understanding neighbors who just genuinely cared and wanted to make sure that everything was okay so as we talked about a design we were trying to make sure that we worked on this in a way that made sense aesthetically and also just for me to be able to manage it if David happens not to be home or if he's at work, for example. So we decided to, to get mulch. We wanted to mulch a portion of the yard, especially the part that was very slopey because it's really difficult to use the lawnmower on that side, even for David. So you see those muscles and some, like even for him, it's like the machine pretty much drags you down. So I did not want to deal with that anymore. So we, were, we just decided to mulch a good portion of the yard. So what we did was the first trip, 
we found out that Lowe's had a huge discount on their mulch. It was like $2.98 per bag when it normally is almost five bucks. So we went to Lowe's. That was the first trip we made. We got some tools. And the crazy thing is when we got to Lowe's, people knew of this deal. So the black mulch was pretty much gone. We had to order online. So we got as much as we could. Uh, we essentially wiped them out. We, there were other people waiting, so we had them get what they, they wanted because there were some people who just wanted one or two, some people wanted five. So after they got theirs, we took whatever was left. And I think we ended up coming home with about 15 bags to begin the project. All together, we got 97 bags of mulch. And we learned quite a lot in this process because we underestimated how much we needed. We did take measurements, but we still somehow underestimated how much we needed. So we had to make about three trips to get all the bags that we needed. Um, you see David over there putting some cardboard down. We just put that there to hopefully prevent weeds from coming through. We want this mulch to last as long as it should. The shelf life that they said this mulch has is 12 months or so, so we make sure that we keep it that way. Um, we also got pavers from low, so you'll probably see them on the edge of our yard, kind of outline the entire yard with that. So that was that was also an expense from Lowe's. Following all the things that we purchased from Lowe's, we went to Home Depot and got some plants. We also got one plant from a uh, a shop where my mom lives. They have a pretty good variety of different plants. So we got a plant that kind of works both as an indoor and outdoor plant in the winter time. We'll probably have to bring it inside so it doesn't die off. But the rest of these are perennials that uh, hopefully we'll be able to maintain. I don't have a green thumb, David does, so I think they will survive. But here he is putting them in the ground now and they're already starting to bloom. So yeah. All together, we got about nine plants. So you're not seeing all nine in this clip, but the other ones are closer to the building. And you, you will see it at the end of the, the whole, when we do the full view of the project. So we continue with the mulching and David, you'll see him in a moment spraying down the cardboard. That is to make sure that, it's, that it stays flat and that the mulch is able to stick to it. It did really help out a lot. There's my macho man throwing his, uh, out <laughs> onto the yard uh, it, he, he did quite a lot of work here I'm so proud I didn't even know like <laughs> how much of a heavy lift this would be but he did it he managed it all so so now we're nearing the end of the mulching part David is spreading the last few bags that he brought from those that day and you see us in the frame breaking up boxes. We got those boxes for free from the Dollar General. They told us to grab whatever we wanted. So I made two trips there and grabbed as much as I could. We It took us some time because we had to remove the tape from the boxes. We didn't want that to be on there when we put the cardboard in the ground. So here we are. We're almost at the finished product. There is still so much more we want to do with this project. But you see the three other plants I mentioned. Two of them are roses and then that indoor outdoor plant is there. and They're beautiful. David had a vision for us to spend more time in the front of the house versus the back because in Liberia he wanted to be able to bring some of his culture here. In Liberia they actually do spend time in the front of their homes so they're able to engage with their neighbors and just enjoy the view. So he made that space in the front um, with some gravel and some paver so we can maybe bring some umbrella, an umbrella or, well, an umbrella, a gazebo, I don't know, something, something that works in that space and we'll bring our chairs out and spend some time out front. He is going to be putting the grass in hopefully next week, but we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like once the grass starts growing in. But overall, it's such a beautiful, project it was something that helped us bond and grow together it was exciting it was challenging uh, we were able to keep it within a decent budget i think overall we probably spent um, almost 900 dollars uh, but not quite so we stayed under our budget and if we had paid somebody for this 
I'm pretty sure we would have spent well over that so I'm happy with this and I'm looking forward to the next stage if we want to bring some more flowers or some some nice plants in that area that we can maintain to just you know bring up the value of the house come on people can you not tell like the value just went up <laughs> so yeah it's it, it's been pretty nice and um i didn't mention earlier that david put down some edging so we never used this edging before but it's, it was pretty neat it's like a no dig edging so he just had to put that in there and kind of hammer that in so that's what you're seeing we didn't do any digging at all with the pave except for the pavers themselves we didn't do any digging uh, for the edging so that did save us a good chunk of time but feedback from the neighbors oh my goodness they it just kept pouring in we got positive feedback all around so yeah this is our project thank you for sticking around and watching the entire thing and we hope you'll join us on our next video please comment like and subscribe until next time peace and love